Today we're talking about neural drive. That's a term for the collection of nerve signals that stimulate muscle contraction. All right, I'm going to show a few graphs and I just want to uh, offer a disclaimer here. At the level of the nervous system, human movement is overwhelmingly complex. All right, so these graphs are way, way simplified. Think of them as gross representations. Okay, it's not actual data. Okay, so high speed movements like jumping, sprinting, throwing, etc. are driven by quick bursts of muscle tension. That's stimulated by quick bursts of nervous system activity. So if we had a way to measure total neural drive to a prime mover, let's say the glutes, during a vertical jump, we would see a quick spike, something like this. It would last a couple tenths of a second, and that would provoke a high rate of muscular force development. Strength training is different. In a heavy deadlift, for example, the neural drive would scale up to a higher level, it would last for much longer, but it wouldn't go up as quickly. That provokes higher muscle tension, but it does not build up as fast. Now you can try to make your lifting more like high speed movements by moving the load fast, but the truth is you can't duplicate that burst in a heavy lift because you have to exercise more control. So there's two different abilities being developed. High speed training teaches the nervous system to generate drive really quickly for a small fraction of a second. Strength training teaches the nervous system to generate maximum drive and to maintain it. But that drive develops more slowly. Alright, so the question is, how do these two abilities interact? Now, I don't want to claim anything that I don't know, so I'll be cautious here. But I'll say that it's possible to develop both abilities pretty well together. But too much focus on strength training can definitely take away from that quick burst ability. So the first lesson here is don't ever stop your high speed training and just lift. And secondly, people ask me uh, if they should strength train every day like an elite weightlifter does. And I say only if you want to be a weightlifter. In the long run, lifting every day is going to slow your nervous system down. And it's a lot harder to get that speed back than it is to lose it. Alright, then the other thing we got to talk about is nervous system fatigue. If you look at this curve for a heavy lift, the area underneath it represents the total amount of neural stress. Heavy lifting is by far the most stressful activity for the nervous system. Over time, consistent heavy lifting produces nervous system fatigue. In my experience, that fatigue affects high speed movements first by reducing rate of force development, then eventually can lead to decreased strength as well. And I'm not talking about one or two days of fatigue. This fatigue lasts for weeks or even months. So another lesson is people need more rest from lifting than they think they need. Also, we need a long-term plan to get around these problems that we run into with strength training. What typically happens is athletes start training and they'll see great results in their athleticism within the first couple months of lifting. But then they hit a plateau and they never really get any better. They'll switch things up, they'll keep training hard, they'll feel better some days than others, but overall they don't really progress. I know there's athletes watching this who know exactly what I'm talking about. So what do you do? I'm going to answer that question in part four. We're going to put all this stuff together and talk about force curves.